All right, so today I'm going to do some more calculus. I'm actually going to go into one of my favorite uh, topics in calculus, and that is revolutions of surfaces, surface revolutions, um, 3D solids, that type of thing. Um, so I'm going to do a um, lesson on that and introduce how it works. Hopefully it makes a lot of sense. It's really not as bad as it looks. Okay, I'd like to start with a geometrical approach. Um, right here I have what we call is a rectangle, right? So I have a rectangle that's about four units long, three units tall. Now, right now, we're talking, thinking about something that's two-dimensional. It's just something that's laying flat on a sheet of paper, right? Now, what happens if I take this shape and I spin it, and I keep spinning and I keep spinning around this axis, like around and around and around? What happens and what would that volume be? That's what we're doing with this calculus lesson here. All right, so the first connection we have to make is as this spins around and around and around, you got to think about where this will land when it gets to the other side down at its lowest point. So it'll create basically a reflection of itself that lands here. And once again, it'll also have three units there and it'll still be four units there. That's what happens when it spins. Now just think, if you spin something around and around and around, guess what you're creating if you look at it from the top, or in this case, if we're looking at it from the side, we're creating a circle, all right? We're spinning something around and it creates a circle, all right? So, what I like to do is after I create that reflection is I like to give me some dots and then I and I throw me a little circle around it so that we can understand that it's creating a different type of shape. And so if we think about that, what we just created was a cylinder. All right, so I'm not the best artist right so in other words what i've created is a cylinder you see that so that's what it creates see if i look at it from the front end there's my circle but if i look at it from the side you'll never know that it was a circle right if you were to really look at it, it looks just like a regular rectangular shape until i turn it and see okay there's my circle so that's pretty much what i'm trying to demonstrate in two dimensions right now all right so so I'm creating a radius, right? I spin the radius around and create a circle, right? Now, this has some type of depth to it, which does that, and then I close it off, and then that's how I create a cylinder. Now, what we're trying to figure out is the volume. And remember, the volume will be a measurement that can tell you how much that, like if this were an empty container, how much can it hold? That's what a volume is. So we use revolutions of services and revolutions of 3D solids and things like that and spin things around so we can figure out their volume. Another way to think about it is like right here. So notice right here, I'm looking at a circle. But remember, I have a lot of them stacked up. And now that I have them all laying next to each other, now I have a cylinder. Everybody see that? So the area would tell me this one. When I find the area, I find the area of one of these. But the instant I take that area, then I add some more to it, then I add another one, then I add another one, and I keep adding these areas up, I'm not looking at something two-dimensional anymore. Now I'm looking at something in three dimensions, and I can use my area I can use a whole bunch of areas to figure out the volume now. That's what we can do in calculus. It's like taking one of these and stacking up so many of them. You can stack them up so many times to figure out what the volume is by taking one area and adding all the rest of the areas to it. And now I have, now I have volume. Area of a circle. A is equal to pi r squared. This will give you the area of a single circle. All right, so that area of a circle, right? Area is equal to pi r squared. That will give you the area of just that one penny, right? But in calculus, we take that same formula, which is the area of a circle, and we do something different to it. The only thing we're going to do to it is that. We're going to add an interval right there, and we're going to take that from A to be and is no longer area it becomes a volume 
hope that makes sense. So I'm going to explain exactly how that works. So this is how the volume works now. Now that I understand the area of one penny, right? I do this to it. So I take that one penny and I do this to it, look at it from another angle, and I stretch it from zero to eight because now I have eight pennies. You get what I'm saying? So we find the area of one, but we stretch it from zero to eight, and it's gonna give me the volume of this small cylinder. So in this case, I have my volume being equal to my integral from zero to eight, and I know the area of one cent. So in other words, it's like taking all eight of these and then we squeeze them together for a single cylinder and it's gonna let me know that volume. Whatever this volume is, is what's gonna actually happen when we get finished calculating. It's gonna give me whatever that is. That's the concept of using a revolution of a surface to figure out its volume. All right, so I'm gonna use my software to build this out. Um, the same one that I started off with, not the penny example, but the rectangle example. So um, I create a function at a height of three and I'm gonna let it start at zero and stop at four. So as you can see here, there's the height of three and it's stopping at the number four. All right, so that's the first thing. So there it is right there. All right, so I want you to see what I have going on so far. There's my function at three from zero to four. There it is right there. Two dimensions, here it is in three dimensions. Now, um, the next thing, the next thing is, remember we have to spin and a full circle goes from zero to 360. And so as you can see here, my, my um, slider stops at 360 degrees. Now, what I'm about to do is spin it in real time so that you can see it go from being that same shape which would have been a rectangle to spinning it into a cylinder all right so here we go i'm about to animate it it's about to start spinning and there it is see how i took that one line and i spin it around that axis and now we're looking at something that looks more like a cylinder we can find the volume of any type of shape. I'm, some of the weirdest shapes you can think of, we can graph them, we can spin them, and we can find the volume of them. So there's this connection with geometry. So the geometry only focuses on the shapes that we understand through simple formulas like um, cylinders and cubes and stuff like that, prisms, things like that. In calculus, we can turn it into some other shape that doesn't have a necessary formula. But what we do know is we can spin something and use that one area and stack them. That's what calculus does. It can take the area from geometry and stack it. And now we can get the volume of weird shapes. All right, so here's something that we don't learn from geometry. Like we don't know how to spin this and find the volume of this, not in geometry. You get what I'm saying? Because this doesn't make a shape that we know of or one of those solid um, rigid type shapes, right? So. In calculus, we can take anything, but I don't care what it is. So here's one of them. And as you can see here, I have it going right here. Let me start, let me get it rotating. And so once I hit play, you can watch it spin around also. And as it spins, it creates something. Like this may look like a vase to some people. See that, it has like a vase shape. We can find the volume of that also. All we do is spin it around, find the volume. And now this is in three dimensions. And you can look at it from all angles, from, the, from that side, and I can spin it around onto the underside. Look at it close up. And so there it is there. I have it locked in place now. And so there it is. It starts off as that one thing there. Oh, let me stop spinning it. So it starts off as a single curve there, but when you spin it around, this is what it will look like. See that? And we can find the volume of this because really all we're really gonna, the only thing the calculus is really doing is looking at it from this side 
and it's going to find the area of every single circle. Even if the circle gets larger, which it does, see these circles will be smaller, but they get bigger and then get smaller again. It finds the area of every last one of those. And then what it can crank out is a volume in like one or two steps. All right. Check out my YouTube page. Just type in uh, BJ Jeffries and then you'll find this picture and subscribe there. Remember, this is um, my channel that I use to upload videos. I talk about different concepts. Each day I show up to work. Feel free to share, subscribe, ask questions, um, things like that. Um, I try to challenge myself with um, unfamiliar material at times. So um, if you have questions for me, you can shoot me some questions. Um, if I can't figure them out, I'll get with someone who can. Then I'll still try to figure out some type of explanation for it.